Hey students, in today's lesson what we're looking at is uh, fission and fusion. So the main aim of um, this particular presentation is to get you more familiar with the binding energy equation, E equals MC squared, and then towards the end we'll start looking at how fission is used um, to produce energy. Um, and um, that should cover pretty much all of the syllabus points on uh, nuclear physics. So we'll start off by uh, answering the question, that what is fission? So generally speaking, fission is when uh, a nucleus will split into two or more pieces. And that typically happens um, or is triggered when uh, a neutron is absorbed by that nucleus and then it becomes unstable. Okay, so as a bit of a warm up into this topic, let's look at, uh, let's look back at those uh, radioactive decay equations that we were solving uh, a couple of weeks ago. And now we're going to apply the same principles of conserving the mass number and the charge number and finding the element using the periodic table. We're going to use those same skills to actually help complete uh, nuclear equations for fusion reactions. So if you have a look at the screen, you can see that we have a neutron um, interacting with the uranium uh, nucleus and then um, two products are formed and a certain number of neutrons. So knowing that, can you solve for the unknowns? I'll give you um, as long as you need, just press pause and I'll start the answers soon. Okay, and here are your answers. I hope you did well. Okay, so what I've got on the screen is a fairly straightforward fission reaction where you have a neutron uh, interacting with that uranium atom and then producing baryon, krypton and three neutrons. It's a fairly standard uh, fission reaction. So without um, getting you to do too much, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is if I was to tell you that there was a loss of mass, so when these new particles were formed, um, if we were to look at the mass of those products, we find that there's a difference or a loss of 0.215 atomic mass units. Could you from there calculate how much energy would be released from that fission reactions? Um, so the easiest thing to do will be to work it out in electron volts first, um, but I want you to, and eventually I want you to do both. So give that a go. Okay, so I'm assuming that you've um, had a crack at it. So if the first thing we want to do is if we know the the change in mass is going to be equal to 0 0.215, then we can answer this one pretty quickly to get mega electron volts, right? So that means your energy is just going to be 931 uh, multiplied by 0 0.215, and that's going to be 200 mega electron volts. Now, to get it in joules, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can simply convert this number if you like, as we did, um, as we've shown before. But what I like to do is actually convert it to kilograms first and then use E equals, M e equals MC squared. So the change in mass is going to be um, 3.569 times 10 to the negative 28. If you multiply uh, U by 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27. Um, so what you'll end up getting is E equals MC squared. And that's going to be equal to 3.569 times 10 to the negative 28 times 3 times 10 to the 8 squared. And you put that in your calculator and what you should end up with, if everything goes well, is 3.21 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. So now that I've given you the mass difference and then from that you've told me how much energy is released. I want you to start from scratch. So I've given you the, the reaction here. So we have a neutron uh, interacting with a uranium atom uh, and it's producing xenon and strontium and two neutrons. These are your masses that you need to use. Um, notice that I've given you the mass of a neutron to be uh, corresponding to what it actually is in the data sheet. Uh, from here, can you calculate the amount of energy released by the fission reaction? Go. Okay, and to solve this, all we're doing is we're finding out the mass difference. So it's pretty straightforward. We've already done it for you on the computer. We've got the mass here of that uranium atom and the neutron. And then on top of that, we are subtracting the mass of xenon and the mass of strontium and the mass of those two neutrons. So once we've done that, we can get a mass difference of 0 0.19723 atomic mass units. And then you just simply multiply that by 
931. Because the question hasn't asked you to calculate it in joules, you don't need to. So there's your answer. Now this question um, is in four parts. It's uh, a, a typically challenging one. So the students in the class are often stumped by the time they get to the end. So let's start it off nice and easy. Um, we've got ourselves an equation here. We've got ourselves the, um, the masses, the whole thing's in kilograms. The first step uh, is asking you to find out what is the decrease in mass of these particles after the fission reaction. So to solve this, what we want to do is just find the mass defect the same way, or the mass difference the same way we would find it in any other time. So we have the mass of the neutron, 1.67495 times 10 to the negative 27. And we're going to add onto that the 3.90305 times 10 to the negative 25. And we're going to subtract from that the mass of the products. And the mass of the products being the mass of the barium, and the mass of the krypton and the mass of three neutrons uh, if you put that in your calculator what you should get is uh, 3.10 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms so the thing about this question is that it's actually fairly uh, easy. You, you would have known what you were doing the whole time, but where people seem to become unstuck is actually entering in these really, these really long numbers into their calculator. Um, that's a common spot for mistakes. So just make sure that you get to know your calculator, get a calculator that you'll be taking all the way through to year 12. So as I've spoken to you about it before, get a calculator that can solve quadratics. So it's year 12 ready. Um, and you should, you know, with, with, with further and further practice, you'll make less and less calculated mistakes. So the next question, or the next part of this question is, if you know the de decrease in mass, can you now tell me how many joules of energy are released during the fission of this nucleus? Again, it's pretty um, pretty simple at this point, isn't it? So you just you know use your e equals mc squared, and that's going to be your three point one zero times three times ten to the eight squared, and if you put that in your calculator, you should get two point seven nine times ten to the negative eleven joules. So with this um, answer, there's a couple of mistakes that could have been made here. Um, one of the more common ones is that you put this square in the wrong spot or you evaluate it incorrectly on your calculator. Um, another place that you can uh, inadvertently lose precision in your answer is, or didn't, it's not really too applicable to this one because this was 3.10, it was pretty close to 3.10. But if you give an answer in uh, three significant figures in the previous part of a question, and you then need to use this answer in a part B or a second part of the question, what you really wanna try and do is keep as much precision as possible as you carry that number uh, through. So again, this comes with getting to know your calculator. You can set uh, numbers to specific variables, or you can you know, use the answer function just to maintain that precision all the way through your calculations. Remember, you still need to give your final answer to three significant figures, but if you're going to use that in a follow-up calculation, you want to use um, as high a precision version of that um, number as possible. Okay, so part C um, is sort of one that some people get a little bit unstuck on. It's asking simply to, to express the decrease in mass as a percentage of the mass of the initial nuclear particles. Give it a go. Okay, so in this question, it seems a little bit funnily worded, but it's not as terrible as you might think. All you need to do is first find out what the mass of the reactants are. And that's just going to be your neutron. Plus your uranium. Uh, 
then what you should end up with is 3.9198 times 10 to the negative 27, no, negative 25, sorry, kilograms. So this is the mass of those reactants. And just, you want to express that as a percentage of, um, or sorry, you want to express the mass difference as a percentage of this particular mass. So you just get what you have at the top there, the 3.10 times 10 to the negative 28, and divide that by your 3.9198 times 10 to the negative 25. And don't forget to multiply that by 100 to get it as a percentage. And if you put that in your calculator, what you will end up with is 0.0791%. The, the point that we're making here with these questions that we've got is that for starters, the amount of energy that's released in one fission reaction is actually quite small. It's times 10 to the negative 11. But remember, this is one reaction. And the difference in mass is 0.0791%. So the decrease in mass is also very, uh, very tiny. But as the next part of this question will demonstrate, this is actually a huge amount um, of energy, uh, relatively, anyway. Okay, so part four of this question is a bit more tricky. Um, it's asking that if you have five kilos of uranium-235 and it completely underwent fission, how much energy in joules will be released? So if we're looking at that objectively, we've got a certain amount of uh, uranium up here. We've got five kilograms of uranium-235. Knowing that if it all underwent fission, how much energy in joules would you get from that five kilogram bunch. Um, something to keep in mind is that this uh, neutron that we have here will st kick off the process, but what we can assume is that these neutrons that are produced uh, at the end or as, as products of the initial fission reaction, they will go on um, to initiate the reaction for the follow-on uh, uranium atoms. So you know that you only need one neutron to actually kickstart this, this entire process and a chain reaction starts. And we'll talk about that um, later on. So have a crack at that question. If you have five kilograms of uranium-235, knowing what you've calculated so far, you might need to calculate a couple of other things. How much energy would be released? Knowing that you have five kilograms, you first need to figure out how many uranium atoms is that, right? So first question I want to ask is how many uranium 235s do I have? And that's just going to be equal to your five kilograms divided by the mass of uranium 235. And if you put that in your calculator, what you end up getting, as you'd expect, a very large number. is 1.281 times 10 to the 25 atoms. So we have a very large number of atoms. Again, it's five kilograms, it's what you'd expect. But from this, we can determine that, that we've got this many number of reactions, because if we have 1.281 times 10 to the 25 atoms and they all undergo fission, then this is how many reactions we have, because we only have one atom required per reaction. So all we need to do now is, well, we know that per reaction, the energy is this number here, the 2.79 times 10 to the 11, negative 11, sorry, joules. So um, the energy is gonna be that number, 2.79 times 10 to the negative 11 joules, multiplied by the number of reactions that take place. and put that in your calculator, you should get 3.57 times 10 to the 14 joules. And I'm sure you would agree with me that that is a massive number, considering we're only using five kilograms of fuel. Okay, so with this next example, what I'm gonna do is illustrate just how much energy you can get from fission reactions uh, using a, a real world example. So I'm gonna continue on from the last example. We're looking at that same uh, uranium 
uh, fission reaction and I've carried over some some numbers that we worked out in the previous question. So the question that I'm now asking is if, if you build a nuclear reactor and you use that uranium-235, how many fission reactions per second are going to be required to power my PlayStation 4? So the PlayStation 4 that I've got, it tells me it's 110 watts. So uh, something that you may or may not know is that power is equal to the change in energy or the energy consumed or basically energy divided by time. So if I've said to you how many fission reactions per second are required to power my PlayStation 4, which is 110 watts, well 110 watts means 110 joules per second. So knowing that um, every second my PlayStation 4 requires 110 joules of energy, uh, how many reactions am I going to need for that to happen? So starting with the equation that I've given you, power is going to be equal to energy over time. So we know that the energy required per second is going to be 100 joules. And if I know the energy for one reaction, which we calculated in the previous slide, is going to be 2.79 times 10 to the negative 11 joules. Um, from here, I can then just figure out, well, how many reactions do I need? Well, I need 100 joules. So how many times does 2.79 times 10 to the negative 11 fit in there? And what I will get is 3.94 times 10 to the 12 reactions per second. And at this point, this may not mean anything to you. That's, I mean, that's a lot of reactions per second, but it doesn't really tell us much. But let's look at the bonus question. So if we know that every second I need to have 3.94 times 10 to the 12 reactions or uh, fission reactions occurring, can you tell me, uh, firstly, you want to figure out how many reactions is that per, per year or 50 years in this case, and then translate that to a number representing how much uranium is going to be consumed. So the question's asking how much uranium is needed to power my PlayStation 4 for 50 years. Okay, so this question can be answered in a number of different ways. So if you if you got the if you got the answer using um, a different method, um, then I'm sure that method was valid. So the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out okay what is the mass of uranium two three five. I'm just going to rewrite it. Uh, the mass of U two three five is going to be it's up the top there. Uh, it's three point nine zero three zero five times ten to the negative fifteen kilograms, right? Or twenty five kilograms. So this is how much. Uh, one atom is. So if I'm going to need that many reactions per second, so the number, the amount of mass that I need for one second is going to be equal to that number multiplied by the 3.94 times 10 to the 12. And what I should get if I do that is 1.53 times 10 to the negative 12 kilograms. So that number there represents how many how, how much uranium I'm going to need for one second. Still, this doesn't really um, tell us anything interesting about how much uranium we're going to need. So what we do is we amplify the problem. We say, okay, well, how long um, or how much will I need for, for 50 years? Okay, so the mass that I need for 50 years is going to be that number again, the 1.53 times 10 to the negative 12. And that's for one second, if it times it by 60 to get it for one minute, times it by 60 again to get it for one hour, times it by 24 to get it to for one day, and times it by 365.25 to get it uh, for one year, and then multiply it again by 50 to get it to 50 years. So we multiply it by a lot of numbers, and if we do that and chuck it in our calculator, what you should end up with is 2.4 grams. And hopefully now you can see just how much energy you can get from a fission reaction. So you're powering a PlayStation for 50 years with just 2.4 grams. How cool is that?
Right, so now that we've done uh, fission, we've done a few fission reactions, we're going to look at fusion now. So fusion is effectively, well, I mean, I guess you could say the opposite of uh, fission. Uh, so in fission, when you have um, a, a heavier nucleus uh, breaking up and forming um, forming different pieces that are smaller. In this case, you have small pieces forming a heavier nucleus in fusion. Um, we'll talk about, we've already spoken in binding energy about how, why this occurs in lighter elements and why fission occurs in heavier elements, but we'll um, readdress this later on. What I want you to do first is just the same as you did with the fission reactions, is I want you to find all the unknown quantities in these reactions. Okay, and the final calculation for this presentation, uh, much the same as you've done for fission reactions, is to calculate for me the amount of energy released by the fusion reaction. Uh, it is the exact same process. You find the difference in mass and you calculate um, the energy that corresponds to that missing mass. Okay, so what you should have done is just worked out what the mass of the reactants were. So you've got your deuterium there and you've got your tritium here and you subtract the addition of the helium-4 and the neutron, which, is, which are the products in this reaction. And you should have got a mass difference of 0.021524. We've got that in use. I haven't asked you f f to give me the answer in joules. So all you would have had to have done is multiply that answer by 931 to get the final result, which is 20 mega electron volts. So as you can see, the f um, solving for the energy in a fusion reaction is exactly the same as solving it for the fission reaction. But something uh, interesting that is in the syllabus that you sort of need to know, um, looking at this slide here, is that the difference in energy that you see between products of fission, so from going from uranium to the lighter elements, the difference in that energy isn't um, terribly huge. But when you go, uh, say, from hydrogen and you know, deuterium and, and tritium to heavier elements, like you've got the helium all the way up here, the change in energy, binding energy per nucleon is actually quite huge. So what this means is that the amount of energy that you get in a fusion reaction uh, per, uh, per fusion reaction is much higher than what you get for fission. So we have, I think we've seen some videos already where um, the fusion is obviously the most preferred way of um, making energy, but the problem with fusion uh, is that we need super duper high temperatures and super duper high pressures to actually make those reactions happen. And that is, um, that is the problem uh, that, we, that we faced for decades. Um, so that's all we've got in terms of the presentation. What I'll do now is um, put on an interactive for, for you to observe a couple of things. Okay, so this is the uh, interactive that I've linked on the website for you. Um, this is from FET. It's, it's fairly old. It's a Java one, but it's, um, it's still really good. It sort of helps you understand uh, what's happening um, with fission. So the first thing the screen that you see is you have the nice little uranium atom sitting here. The whole thing's just wiggling around. It's a little bit radioactive, but then you throw a neutron in the mix. It, the neutron is absorbed. It's important we talk about how the neutron is initially absorbed and then the um, atom becomes very unstable and then undergoes fission. So you can see it becomes unstable and then uh, divides up into those uh, daughter nuclei. So moving on from that, we want to talk about how um, we have a chain reaction. So again, if I fire that neutron at the uranium atom, you have the, the pieces uh, come off, the daughter nuclei come off, as well as uh, extra neutrons over there. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a number of um, uranium nuclei, and then what you'll see is those neutrons that are released are going to trigger more fission reactions. Now, lucky for me, I had enough uranium atoms in there for the uh, chain reaction to occur. And when we have enough 
of that um, fissile mass, we call that having the critical mass or having enough, or having a mass above the critical mass. So uh, the definition of critical mass is um, the amount of uh, fissile material uh, required to sustain uh, a chain reaction. Um, another important thing that I should probably point out now um, if, is that the if I reset that and hit it again, you notice that when the neutrons are released, they're going much, um, they, they're released with the energy corresponding to um, how much uh, energy is released from a nuclear reaction. So it's, it's going to be fairly fast. One of the important things here is that for fission to occur, you need to be able to slow down uh, these neutrons. If they're going too fast, then they'll just essentially just bounce off and not be absorbed or the neutron capture won't occur. So what you typically have in a nuclear reactor is a moderator and the moderator um, can uh, is usually water. And what that does is that slows down the neutrons. So when it's released from that uranium atom, uh, it won't be traveling so fast and it will be um, fairly useful. And finally, we've got uh, a simulator of a nuclear reactor. So what I can control here are the control rods. Now, control rods are um, basically neutron absorbers, right? So when you have neutrons being released in this chain reaction, they won't be able to go very far if you've got the control rods in the system. So if I fire some neutrons, what you notice is that the reactions won't cross over, that the, those rods will absorb the neutrons and the reaction will stop fairly fairly quickly. But if I then, I'm just going to reset it and then pull out the control rods, what you'll find is those neutrons uh, will continue uh, to trigger further nuclear reactions and you'll have that chain reaction taking place um, to the point that you have plenty of energy coming in. And you see the temperature increases, so if I throw in those control rods now, it's probably going to be too late. Yep, it's definitely too late. Uh, but those control rods, usually they moderate uh, how quickly the reactions are taking place using those control rods, which just, they, they capture the neutrons so the uranium atoms can't. And that's essentially the end of this week's lesson. What I want you guys to do is just finish all the problems in the textbook, um, and I'm sure the book has plenty more to read on nuclear reactors and chain reactions. The focus of my lesson was to get you to um, apply those binding energy calculations. All right, thanks.